I'm really sorry. I didn't think it would end up like this. I am a good person. That is who I am. You better run for your life. Barry, you're irredeemable. So I wanted to start with your work as director on the show, because of course you've directed episodes in past seasons, but this marks the, the first time that you direct the full season yourself. So it was making me wonder, what is it about the season four storyline that made you feel that it was necessary to be at the, at the helm for every single episode? It wasn't so much the storyline. It was more just that I think when we bring in other directors, even when it's, you know, Alec Berg, the co-creator, I, I just... I just got more and more confident as a director and, and I was driving people crazy because I was like, no, 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 it's got to be over here. <laughs> like I saw it super specifically. And I think Aida Rogers, our great producer at the end of season three said, you know, I think maybe you should direct them all next season because I think it'll just production will go smoother because it's a big game of telephone, you know? So um, I, I, I said, yeah, sure. And it was, it was, overwhelming at times but it was ultimately really re rewarding oh for what it's worth that confidence is not misplaced you pull off some pretty exceptional stuff this season it just oh, gets bigger you. and bigger thank you thank you all right so i wanted to ask you a little bit about bringing the series to a close now specifically what your last day on set was like are there any specific memories that might stick with you and maybe be a defining factor in terms of how you'll look back on the barry experience overall no, I mean, I just, I mean, bringing the show to a close or bringing the, you know, the show and the story to a close is really satisfying. You know, you want to finally put the end on a thing is nice, but the harder thing is just saying goodbye to the crew and the the cast who are just these amazing artists that I've had the privilege to work with uh, for the last six years. And it's, it's just been a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. I mean, the best you know experience of my career. So that that's been the hardest part is saying goodbye to everybody. So that just means you have to come up with another idea. Yeah, now you got to come up with a new idea. Yeah, come up with something else. <laughs> no big deal at all. Yeah, no I have to, ask, have to ask about one specific scene because Guillermo del Toro is one of my favorite human beings in this industry and pretty much on this planet. So what was it like directing a directing legend? And what was it about him as an actor that maybe caught you by surprise when you worked with him uh, on this? Oh, he, yeah, he was just like, hey, I love your show and I'd, I'd love to be on it. And I said, oh, okay, so wrote him apart. And then he, I think, was so surprised that we actually did it. And then he came in and he was great. You know, he was just super game, knew his lines and had, you know, two different takes on the scene and did them both. And, and, uh, he was great. Yeah, he was a wonderful guy. Does not surprise me to hear that one bit. Uh, given bringing him up right now, I am curious because the the tone of season four feels a little different. And again, you get very ambitious with some of your directing choices in this particular season. So were there any new influences, directing influence, past film, past shows that you found yourself referring to on season four that you had never used before? Carl Hersey, the DP, and I would talk about, you know, different movies or or photography or certain things you know um an example i usually show people is the opening of ashes and diamonds by anjay vita that that opening of that movie is kind of like I, you know i really love how this is shot and how it looks and how it feels and then you you go through those things of kind of those influences and certain influences in um literature but you know people like tobias wolf or um George Saunders or, you know, things like that. And then, and then um, you put it together and then you do it and then you look at it and you're like, oh, I like the Coen brothers. <laughs> just, like, just looks like a Coen brothers thing. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I love the Coen brothers, it's, which I do, but it's just, yeah, you can't escape your inf I like Coen brothers, Scorsese, Alfonso Cuaron, you know, the, the, all those people. And it's all there, see. and I'm like, oh, brother, I can't. It doesn't matter how highfalutin I try to get with the influence question. It's like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it leading there with how you teed it up, but I get yeah, it. Uh, yeah, it he works. just clearly has watched No Country for All Men a hundred times. <laughs> and it's, yeah. The guy I was dating in LA Run. killed my acting teacher's girlfriend. Run. I think I might be in a lot of trouble. I got a big question for you to start here. So Sally's obviously gone through quite a bit since the beginning of the series. 
of everything you filmed over the course of the show's run, is there a particular scene that redefined the character for you most where, you know, you could feel everything you shot after that moment, basically influencing every new scene you filmed? I think there's a few, like, you know, incremental moments like that throughout, but the big one would have to be when she kills the biker because it's just the point of no return. And suddenly she's accidentally complicit in a whole other world that she didn't even know she was so close to. Um, and I think that, you know, Sally is kind of morally dubious, like all the characters on the show, but she knows not to kill people. She hasn't done that. So she's walked into a kind of dark space that we haven't seen her in before. And I think it affects the entire season four because she can't, she can't wash that memory off. Can confirm that is true. And I might even call that an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barry. You're so, getting it then. <laughs> oh, very much so. We landed. So, okay. <laughs> so I know you've mentioned before that the the Sally and Barry relationship is is basically one that's based on projections being functional only because they don't really see who each other are. So can you maybe tease how that changes for Sally now that she has heard about Barry's arrest and also what he's actually done? Well, I think it's interesting because, yeah, I think over the course of the last three seasons, that was the case. Their romance was built on projections. And then at the end of three, Sally is fully witnessed in her most base animal rage mode by this man. So she's never been so seen and she sees him clearly. And the sad part is the the one deep moment of connection they have is in those moments after she's killed him when they're when he's holding her face and trying to take responsibility so it was it was sort of like their relationship was sort of now forged in fire in this particular way and they're bound by this crime and and bound by blood literally so when we get into season four and she finds out what Barry's done to Janice I think there's a huge pivot where she's repelled and shocked and angry and she can't believe like that he's been lying to her all this time and that he's maybe a sociopath but she quite quickly realizes how alone she is in the world with this horrible thing that she's done and the one person who was not only there to bear witness but also stood by her side and loved her anyway is Barry so strangely after not seeing each other clearly for all these years they do see each other and it's a really ugly thing that they see. Um, and I think when she says, I feel safe with you, it's that she's choosing to be in proximity of someone who saw the worst of her and stuck around. Oh, that line, that line hits so, so well. Your, your, last, your last two answers are making me think a little bit about this, but it's more of a theory question. Have you ever considered what Sally's path might have been if Barry had still gotten arrested and exposed, but she had never killed the biker? Yeah, I mean, I think that there would have been maybe some hope for her <laughs> that, you know, she... Well, she sabotaged her, well, her career fell apart and then she self-sabotaged. But I think that, I think that without that horrible thing that happened, her life had potential. I mean, there was a lot of things she could have done, but once she's crossed that line, I think there's no going back, sadly. Oh, my heart. You know? All right, let's switch gears to behind the scenes stuff now. And of course sure. I wanted to follow up on working with Bill as a director, because of course he directed a good deal on past seasons, but this is different because he directed the entire season. So yeah. I was wondering how did that change your experience on set and maybe even how did it influence your performance in a way that felt necessary and helpful given what Sally is going through in this season versus the past three? Well, I think when we all found out he was going to do all eight, we were like, wow, are you crazy? <laughs> that is so much work. Um, but he was, he had something in his mind and he really saw his vision through um, while maintaining a, you know, collaborative atmosphere with all of us. I think that there were, you know, he's really into film and um, has a pretty encyclopedic knowledge of cinema and he wanted to, I think he wanted to push the visual aesthetic of the show this season and he got very ambitious with the the way it was shot and you know huge wides and um lots of wonders and i think that it gave the show a new visual language that really helps with where the story goes because it's in such a new and 
bleak place um, with a few jokes. There's still a few laughs. Um, and so I think it was, yeah, it gave the show like a very clear vision and we all really signed up and took that collective jump together. And I, you know, got to credit HBO for really giving us time. Like TV can move so fast and that's, that's really your enemy is that speed. But we were given so much time so we could rehearse. We could rehearse before we were shooting. There was so much time for creative conversations from everything from hair and makeup to costume to, to shot setups to everything. So we were very well prepared so that on the day, if he's, you know, pivoting between acting and directing, it was pretty seamless. Um, and he had Duffy Boudreaux with him as well, who's a good um, old best pal of his, um, who was who was able to help sort of direct his performance. And um, Aida Rogers, our producer, is like, I think she's a magical wizard. I don't know how she makes it all happen. It's like Bill dreams up or Alec dreams up like these insane things. And Aida goes, yep, got it. And doesn't even flinch. And well, there's no, I can't give spoilers, but there's certain things we shot this season that should have been impossible. <laughs> And, um, and Aida really made them happen. So you need that, you need that person who can facilitate that kind of wild vision. And, and Aida is the one. Makes my day to hear about a supportive environment on a set like that. I absolutely love it. Yay. Yeah. We're looking. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what your last day on set was like, and if there are any memories that'll really stick with you and maybe wind up being a defining factor in terms of how you look back on your Barry experience? I mean, it was totally surreal. My last day on set, there was snow. And so the whole set just had this dreamlike quality and it was like kind of walking into a snow globe. And, you know, emotions were running high, but you can't really yield to that if it doesn't match the scene you're shooting. So like any other day, one foot in front of the other, got to say the lines, got to do your job. And then finally was my last uh, take. And you know, I did it. And then I asked Bill, do you need another one? And he said, no, I think we got it. And I said, okay, I guess we got it. And resisting the urge to be like, let's do it again and again and again. <laughs> like, don't let it end. And so, yeah, that was it. And then, you know, the crew were gorgeous and plotted and made a little speech to them. It was very sad saying goodbye to the crew. We have like the most incredible crew in the world. And I'm sure we may work together again, but not in that ensemble, you know? So that I think that the the hard part was just saying goodbye to the people, but there was satisfaction in in finishing the story. There was joy to that, and and yeah, a really kind of everybody felt. I think everybody felt like their story ended in a way that felt right. What happened back there? I was just trying to protect you. I don't know what people are telling you, but I meant what I said to you. I love you. Hey Barry, I got you. I wanted to start by looking back a little for you both because you two have just this absolutely magnificent confrontation in the season three finale where Jim interrogates Gene. So I was wondering for both of you, can you tell me something about the other that you appreciated as a scene partner that really came in handy with doing a super tense scene like that? I will tell you that I would not have been able to accomplish that scene without my acting partner. Uh, we were in a room by ourselves. There was no crew. They were on the other side of the wall of the garage. There was only this big metal crane, two metal chairs, Jim and me. And I, I was able to accomplish that scene because of my acting partner. Yeah, I, 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 I can echo that. And what I, what really kind of woke up to me, the brilliance of, of Henry's creation, Gene Cousineau, he was this narcissistic character who sincerely wooed my daughter and, and fell in love with her. It was a real love because she felt it. And I knew that she felt it. And then, so this man that I was confronting in the garage had many layers that came out in the midst of our exchange. At the top, there was a deflection of a narcissist. What are you talking about? As we went into, and then the, then the momentum just went to another place, a dark place where I was speaking from the pain of losing my daughter. And I spoke to the man who lost 
his lady and and I wanted the truth and I would have if I could have gotten physical I would have picked him up and pushed him against the wall but we did it all with just it was the most real moment possible Henry was intensely frightened and I was intensely revenge and um and it came out and no neither one of us expected the sparks to fly like that and that's what uh, the show is really lucky at getting is just really, really real moments. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's for sure. The sparks fly big there and elsewhere throughout season four. Henry, I'll throw this one your way because four seasons now, the show is uh, is coming to a close with this one. So can you tell me a little bit about your very last day on set and if there are any memories that'll stick out to you and you know maybe be a defining factor when you look back on your Barry experience? The last day of shooting, I am in the last shot by myself. I come out of a room and the crew is there and Bill hugs me and whispers in my ear, thank you for being such a great collaborator. He mm -hmm. was my writer, my producer, my, with uh, Alec Berg, my director and my acting partner. And for him to say that to me was so emotional. I mm. can't tell you. Everything okay, mi amor? Yeah, everything's gonna be great. I wanna start with the uh, Hank and Crystal Ball relationship. Can you tell me if there's a new layer that you got to tap into when playing Hank because of that connection to Crystal Ball, something that you know you never would have explored with that character had they not pursued their connection together? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think that the uh, Hank, uh, Krista Ball kind of um, this this chemistry between them, this this dynamic between them has like evolved, I think, so beautifully into into something very like very heightened, but also really just kind of every day. I feel like there's so many people who like relate, to, like, you know, just just who they are with each other. I mean, classic, you know, who who can't relate to two uh, mob bosses just in love with each other, right? We can all, I mean, we can all take a page. Um, but I think, yeah, on a personal level, what I got to play in this this uh, final season with Michael Irby was just so special. And I'm so excited for audiences to see just what we what we drum up and, uh, and all the really kind of amazing moments that play out, play out between us. Can confirm there's quite a few of them that I might get to later. But first, I'm going to kind of turn that same question towards Barry as well. A complicated two-parter here. But what yeah. is a particular quality or strength that Hank gained from having worked with and grown close to uh, Barry? But then also I want the opposite, a weakness that Hank only acquired due to Barry's influence on him. Oh, wow. That's a great question. I'll start with the weakness, actually. I mean, I think this season is kind of... Um really about how how Barry's kind of toxicity has rubbed off on each of these characters, right? Each of these characters have kind of acquired Barry's like sickness and 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 what's you know what's going on with him. And I think Hank is is certainly is certainly one of them. Um I think that he is kind of wanting to be this thing that that ultimately he is not and and it gets me into a lot of trouble uh because of it um now a positive thing that he's gained from from Barry is um yeah probably i think in a roundabout way i think Hank learned how to say no and learned how to really stand up for himself you know i think at the beginning he was a people pleaser and then it kind of morphed into more of a Hank uh saying no you know Hank uh drawing a boundary big deal. I'm curious if the answer to this question is something very specific now, but obviously Hank's been through quite a lot over the course of the show and he's changed quite a bit of everything you filmed for the entire series. Is there any particular scene that you feel redefined the character the most for you? Something where after you shot that particular scene, you could feel that material influencing everything you shot after for Hank? You know, I think that there was, I mean, there have been a lot of moments that I feel like have just 
found where I found different layers to this character. Uh, and that's been so special. I mean, there was a there was a moment um, in season two where Hank confronts Barry outside of the acting class. And I feel like that's a moment where you see Hank be really uh, scary, you know. But what I like about it is, is you know, he's scary not because he's this really menacing mob boss, but because his feelings were hurt, right? He was like told he was an idiot and that really hurt his feelings. And that was what propelled him to show up and threaten Barry. And he is threatening, but it's all coming from that, you know, from that wounded place. So it's really, yeah, it's really cool. It's very smart. I just feel like a lot of his scary decisions come from, you know, that kind of sensitive, like genuine emotion. And I feel like that's why the character resonates with so many. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Maybe sensitive people should not be mob bosses. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's, you know, moral of the story. You know? Well, I guess that's one career path I am not pursuing. Uh, a specific scene uh, in the new season that I have to ask you about, because Guillermo del Toro is one of my absolute favorite people in this industry, just a true ray of light. What is it like acting opposite a directing legend? And then also maybe what surprised you about him as an acting scene partner on set? For sure. Well, I, I had to really uh, adjust my nerves <laughs> because I'm again, I'm like, like, like you such a huge fan of him. And I had to stop myself from picking his brain about every single one of his films that I just completely adore. And, and instead just really focus on, on what we were doing. But he made it very easy because he was just so charming. He has such a big heart and, and, uh, and such a lovely attitude. Uh, it's fun too because specifically when we were working together you know there was a moment where we were trying to figure out a part of the scene and I saw his kind of director hat go on and and it was fascinating because then I saw him kind of move into this place of of curiosity and whatever it is that makes his films just so gorgeous and so realized I was like that's it right there oh my god I'm witnessing it wow very lucky. <laughs> now I'm curious, if you weren't holding back, what one Guillermo del Toro directed film would you have done anything to ask him about? Oh my God, Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, yeah. without a doubt. I was like, I, 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 but, but you know, I was like, one day, we're, we're going to be best friends. So, you know, one day I'll bring it up to him. Dude's got a big heart. I wouldn't be surprised if you stayed close friends. Yeah, um, sure. So obviously I have to ask you about Barry coming to a close. And specifically, I want to know what was your very last day on set like? And were there any memories that you think will stick with you and maybe wind up being a defining factor in how you look back on your experience making the show? Yeah, the final day was, um, it was one that was, you know, really sad and, and really beautiful. I mean, I, but I did, really make a point to just take everything in you know i would stop and just take a moment to to be present with exactly where i was and take stock of the entire journey that has been leading up to that moment and um and yeah and i think the every every time i got to go to work was just a, a defining moment I, I i think i grew as an actor and as an artist and as a person Jeff, because of this show. So um, yeah, and I'm excited for people to to see it all realized in this, in this fourth season. I would definitely believe everything you just said. And given the fact that I keep hearing everybody having wonderful experiences working on Bill with the show overall, is there anything about him as like, not just a co-star, but also a director and a, and a leader on this set that you really appreciate it and hope to have on your onset environments and other shows and films in the future? I'm honestly so spoiled. We are so spoiled to have someone like Bill because he he's so fast and so efficient and so brilliant all at once. And so, you know, we have like half days, basically. <laughs> I mean, there's been so many scenes that we just, you know, because of his preparation, because he has it all together and because he knows what he wants, uh, things move really quickly. And, and, um, but he's also really curious and lets you do whatever you want. So again, spoiled. Um, but I, I, I don't have, you know, there, there's so much good that I can say about Bill Hader. Uh, he's just a genius and I want to work with him again. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't blame you given everything I've heard. He definitely sent like similar to Guillermo. Sounds like a, a very positive force with a big heart in this industry. We need more of those. I've saved my favorite question for last right now. I need to know. What do you think Hank's favorite game to play or thing to do in Dave and Buster's is? Oh, wow. Oh my God. What a great question. Now we're getting to it. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. I would think, um, yeah, like definitely air hockey. Okay. You know, step to this and you're going to lose. All right. Cause that <laughs> disc is going to be flying towards your face and it's going to take you out. All right. Um, yeah, let's do it. Air hockey. 100%. Harry betrayed me. I showed him how I really felt and he betrayed me. Poor Fuchs has been through quite a bit since the very beginning of the series. Oh, absolutely. Of everything you filmed for this show, is there any particular scene that you found redefined the character the most for you? Something where everything you filmed after that moment wound up being heavily influenced by that particular scene? Oh, that's a good question. Um, probably, uh, we were talking earlier today about uh, the Ronnie Lilly episode um, where the girl <laughs> uh, bites me on the cheek. And then, and then right after that, she runs away and blood streaming down her, her face. And I say, what are you? And I think that's the defining moment of Fuchs from then on is like, what is happening? Yeah. I think that is a, that's a very, very fair one to bring up <laughs> to, to focus on season four in particular now, yes. even after three seasons of really big moments for him like that. When you first read the season four scripts, was there any particular scene or thing he goes through that made you think like, wow, I never could have imagined I'd get the opportunity to go there with this character? Mm, yeah, well, that happened later in the show, for sure, because you'll see, yes, you see the characters that you thought you knew are going to be different by the end of this season. So, yeah, I didn't uh, we, we don't like you guys. We don't get you know, all, all eight scripts in a bunch, we get them piecemeal uh, at the same time. But I personally, I love to focus on what my character is doing, the through line of what's just happened before, what could happen uh, later. But I don't want, I don't even want to read more than once the script for what other people have is because I'm a fan. I want to see, I just want <laughs> I don't want to know what happens to them. I want to see it on the screen. So I, I specifically try not to read a script very carefully, except for what I have to do to do my work correctly. <laughs> so four full seasons of this show now, it is coming to a close. Can you tell me a little bit about what your very last day on set was like? And if there were any moments from that day that you think might stick with you and be defining factors in how you look back on your Barry experience? I have to say truthfully, I wasn't sad that the show was ending because I think the arc of a character with PTSD has to, in reality, just, it's gonna go down, it's not gonna go up. So I wasn't unhappy that the reality of the show was ending. Uh, I was unhappy about not being able to see people, you know, that you've become a family with. You're on set, uh, you see those people more than your family. So they become your family for that time. Same with I did 13 years on King of the Hill. I saw marriage, divorce, babies, you know, births. Uh, and this is like that. But uh, I think that since this cast is a little smaller than that one, uh, we are very bonded. And I, I don't see us letting go. Like, you know, when you come in and do a couple of shows for somebody else, you don't necessarily connect with them. All of us are connected and love each other. And I think we'll stay that way. I keep hearing that. It sounds like a top-down effect. Like Bill <laughs> Bill set the right tone on set and really encouraged that kind of collaboration and really yeah, vibe. Yeah. Bill and Alec, uh, as Henry will tell you, had a no <laughs> policy. And, and that's true. Uh, on down to the smallest crew member, to the craft services, everybody was there to do their best. Every single set should operate with that policy in mind. I agree with you 110%. All right, sticking with Bill now, I'm curious about his approach to working on Barry as not just the star of the show, but also a director and an overall leader on this set. And I got a, a two-parter for you on that. Mm -hmm. What's something about his approach to being a leader on Barry that has stayed the same since day one of making the show? But then also, what is something new he did on season four that signaled to you that he's honed his craft significantly over the years? Yeah. Well, first of all, the fact that he directed all eight episodes in season, season four gives you uh, confidence that uh, his producers and his fellow creator have that much confidence in that 
singularity of vision for this whole season. That should give him confidence that people like what he's doing. I thought he directed the the pilot of this show, which I, I thought he did a pretty good job as a first time director. But ha having then directed maybe three the next season and then five and then uh, so I have only unlimited respect for his his directorial abilities. But the fact that he's able to juggle them, you know, and wear that many hats. And he's dressed in his his prison outfit, telling me what to do in a prison um, as a producer, as a director, as a fellow actor, and um, as a writer. And because we we all write a little bit on set and smudge things around, but this man is wearing all hats at the same time, and I, I have enormous respect for that.